Hi again and welcome to this video where we are looking at the work energy principle. Okay, so work and energy, how do they relate to each other? Well, actually, work and energy, okay, here's work, work and energy is very closely related. Okay. Okay, work and energy is very closely related. And um, what is the relation between them? Well, in the next couple of videos, we are going to have a look at what is the relationship between work and energy and how do they compare with each other. First of all, let's start with one very familiar energy called kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy. I'm sorry, I'm writing very ugly today kinetic energy so what is kinetic energy well here's the first um, understanding you can have for the relationship between the two energies is that kinetic energy is the work done okay, it's the work that an object is doing by virtue of its motion okay by virtue of its motion okay so basically what that means is that any object in motion if I have any object that is in motion that object is doing work okay and that work that it has because it is in motion is called its kinetic energy and we use an EK E with a footnote K or simply just a capital letter K to indicate the energy that it has or the work that it is doing by virtue of its motion okay so um, how about a formula okay obviously okay the bigger an object is if it's moving it is definitely it, it, it more energy is needed to me move more energy is needed to move a larger object or a, uh, an object with a bigger mass so mass forms part of it obviously the faster an object moves okay more energy is needed as a matter of fact um, there's a quadratic relationship and the complete formula is exactly this this formula calculates the kinetic energy that an object has and the work that it is doing by virtue of its motion so let's look at how a little bit further at um, on how these things relate okay first of all if an object is moving okay um, and let's actually consider it accelerating okay so an accelerating object Okay, so imagine this thing, this object is accelerating. Okay, then we know, according to Newton's second and first law, that there's definitely a net force acting on an accelerating object. And that net force is given by, so the net force is given by the mass times the acceleration. Okay, now what is the net work done? by such an object. Okay, so if we know that a force is acting on an object and it's in motion, it means there if there's a net force acting on it, it is in motion, which means it must have a displacement. Okay? If something's in um, in motion, it must have a displacement. So what would be the net work that is being done? In other words, the work done by the net force. Well, it's simply the net force, okay, times the displacement let's use delta x now obviously the net force okay is in the same direction as the acceleration and acceleration is in the same direction as the displacement hopefully that makes sense to you thing can't accelerate in an opposite uh, or in a different direction than its displacement so it's either in the same direction or the acceleration is in the opposite direction but it simply means it's either positive or it's negative so that direction will always be 
um, in the force, if the net force is negative, acceleration will be negative. If it's positive, acceleration will be positive. So we can also always see that it's parallel to the displacement and therefore we don't need the cos of the angle. Okay, it will either be 0 or 180 degrees and that will already be included in the plus or the minus. So we don't need that part of our formula. Okay, um, and then we see, okay, well net force we know. How will we calculate net force? Net force will be the mass times the acceleration. So I'm trying to get to a formula to show you something. Mass times acceleration times delta x. So this is another formula that can be used to work out the net work done. Okay, but there's something I want to show you here. This product, a times delta x, appears in another formula, in one of our motion formulas. Okay, I wonder if you can recall which one. Well, it's the one where we have that the future velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, now a delta x can therefore be solved. Okay, how do we solve it? Well, we first subtract the initial velocity squared on both sides to be left with 2a delta x, and then we just divide both sides with a 2. Okay, uh, which means that this part of my formula, this part here, can be replaced with that part. Now why am I trying to replace it with that part? Well, I'll show you just now. This is velocity and I want to actually try and see what is the relationship between work, okay, the net work done, and kinetic energy. Okay, and here I see well my kinetic energy formula has mass and it has velocity. So I also want to have mass and velocity in my work formula. So what do I do? Okay, I keep mass, but this part of the formula I'm going to replace with, okay, with the future velocity squared minus initial velocity squared divided by 2. And then when I solve this, I multiply in the mass and I divide both terms with 2. So I actually multiply both terms with a half. So what do I get? Well, I get a half mass future velocity squared minus a half mass initial velocity squared. And do you see what we have? We have this formula. The only difference is we have the formula. This part of the formula represents my future potential energy. Okay, not potential, kinetic I mean. The future kinetic energy. And this part of the formula is my initial kinetic energy. Okay. So, what do I have? I have simply the change in kinetic energy from what it is now to what it was a little while ago, sometime in the past. Okay, and the change means, or the difference between them um, is the change in kinetic energy. So, this is what I have, a remarkable finding that the network done by any uh, force the network done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And this is the work energy principle. Let me put it in words. The work energy principle says the following. It says that the network done by all the forces acting on an object is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the object. Okay, and in the next video we will have a look at what on earth does that actually mean? Why is it true? Why is it that the net work done by all the forces acting on an object is equal to the kinetic energy of the object? Okay, but that's in the next video. I hope you understood how I got to the work energy principle. And if you don't, I suggest you watch the video again.